What's going on everybody? Today's video will be video two of our four part series and it's picking up right where video one left off which was the 3D scanning. This video we're going to take it from our CAD model all the way up to our printer and end with a finished 3D printed part. Alright, so if you watched video one, this image should be familiar, and this is the scan of the air box. Um, under here was the air filter, you know, and our, our mounting points. The critical points were obviously the mounting points around the air filter inlet right here, and then where the boxes mount here. And then we also have to design around this part of the chassis right here, and you can see how little room we have to get under that to give a better seal on the airbox lid. So that just kind of very quickly gets new people up to speed with where we're at scanning everything. All right, and here it is in the CAD program we use. We use Onshape, it's just something I kind of started using and have stuck with. Right now it looks gray, but if you zoom in, you can see these are all the faces that make the mesh, that make the physical part. So now that this is in our CAD program, you know, this is when we can kind of really start designing the lid. So I'll jump ahead real quick. You can see there's all the surfaces that we had to make. And we were, we were able to make those surfaces off of these curves that might be a little hard to see. Oops. So if I get rid of the surfaces, the curves, which I just opened up, you can now see all the curves we had to make around the perimeter of the top and bottom. And if we rotate it like this, these arches that go over it to make you know the actual nicely formed lid. So if I get rid of curves, there you go. Put the curves back. And then off of those curves, was able to do lofts loft from curve to curve to curve to curve to build all of my surfaces across it and ended up with a figure with a shape like this. Now if we get rid of that again, this one, if we get rid of the surfaces, I'll just try and pick one. These were extrudes. Where am I? So this 3D fit spline is how you're able to pick a point to a point and then all of your adjustments right here to change. So we could drag if we wanted a slightly different curve, see how we could drag it up just to make it a little bit bigger. Computer's thinking, there it goes. Um, might take a second or two, my computer's just a little bit slow get out of that because I don't want to change it and then once you end up doing your curves I'll just pick this one right here and I just did a lofted surface between two of the curves and then you can see how quickly you know I was able to just build a cover over the whole thing then once you have your surfaces uh, you can come down and you can thicken all of your surfaces to make your surface an actual part. Now you can see I thickened everything to 75 thousandths of an inch because that will be pretty close to our finished carbon fiber part dimension thickness. So that way once I 3D print it, it will be a very very close representation of you know the carbon fiber part in real life because any thicknesses especially around the flange gone around the outside any difference in thicknesses will make the part fit differently in real life versus the CAD model so now that I had all of my surfaces made I pointed this out earlier how little bit of room we have to be able to squeeze between this is part of the frame of the car down to the airbox how we have such a small amount of room. So to get all these curves kinda to flow, to fit under there was a little bit of a, it was a little bit tricky, um, but was able to get that to happen. And then all of a sudden, if I make all of my parts, 
So now all the surfaces are thickened. And then there's my lid. Now it's separate colors because technically the blue is apart, the yellow is apart, that one is apart, and I think even this upper tab was a separate part. And if you're more familiar with CAD modeling than me, please comment below um, if you know exactly what I did wrong. I wasn't quite able to figure out why I couldn't just make these parts all one part. So you can see the part thickness. That's technically only 75 thousandths. So not quite sure why this part wouldn't join with these parts. I had something just a tiny bit off, but I was okay with it because again, being a 3D printed part, I knew I was gonna have to, you know, kind of smooth this anyways to make a mold of it. And I also knew that they could be exported as one part. So even though, you know, we're technically all, so here, if I get rid of part two, gets rid of that whole bottom flange around the mounting point. But again, knowing I can export as one part allowed me to then just bring it up in Mesh Mixer. So there you go. So there is the lid in Mesh Mixer. Now the reason I originally brought it up in me Mesh Mixer is I wanted to you can see the build plate, which is a CR10S, which is one of the 3D printers I have that you'll see in a minute. But you can tell it's obviously too big to print in one part. So my plan was to split it roughly here, and then that, that main body will kind of separate, and then split it this way, print it out in three parts. I'm new-ish to them, so I'm not super versed on exactly the best way to use the programs. But you can see down here, after I tried to split it, my seven or eight parts ended up turning into 11 shells, and I couldn't figure out how to separate the three parts. So in my case, Mesh Mixer didn't quite work for me that great. So what we ended up using was this 3D Builder, which is a free program with uh, any Windows machine which allows you to bring in any part you want. Now this is the whole entire thing as one piece. Then I was able to import the whole lid as one piece. And funny enough, this cheap free program right on Windows was actually the best program I found to be able to split this. And there you go, as you can see, just got it into three separate pieces that will fit on the build plate of my 3D printer. Which then, as you can see, allowed me to get the whole thing on the build plate. And then if we slice it and go to the preview, you can see how I did have to do supports under a certain portion of it. And the reason I did this one this way if I stood it up on this edge right here, it would have had to do supports all the way up to this upper, oh, we're not seeing the whole thing, all the way up to this upper edge and added several hours of print time. So play with your models in your slicing software and just kind of do what works with what's best for you. And these were printed out in a basic PLA, no crazy settings or anything. And they were printed out on this CR10S. Uh, two pieces were done on this one. One piece was able to fit on my Ender 3 as well. All right, so here's the start of the, what I'm calling the main body. And then here's the front half, I believe it is, going. So we'll check back when these are done. And then we do have to do the third piece, uh, which will be on this machine. All right, and here is the other two pieces that make up the main part of the top. I'm happy with how these look. They, um, they actually printed out pretty good. So what we'll do is pop these off. and head downstairs to the car and do our initial test fit. All right, so the only thing I really have to do 
Just get rid of the bridge support. All right, and then these two, whoops, got a little bit more on this one. All right, so now that I have all three pieces, you now these faces should meet up pretty good, and they do, pretty close. And then this one will be here, and that mates up pretty good. And this one would be over here, and looks good enough. So you can already see the issues with uh, not having a printer quite big enough. They do make larger printers. I just unfortunately don't have one and don't quite see a return on buying one. Um, so there will be a little bit more work in getting these three pieces, um, you know, to be one solid piece. I guess the one advantage is that if I screwed up my CAD model to some degree, having three pieces, I can just slightly move the three before kind of bonding them all together and making it one piece. Where if it was printed out as one piece, it would kind of be, uh, you know, you're kind of stuck with what you got. If you needed to modify anything, you know, you ended up cutting it up anyway. So, um, or just reprinting the whole thing, which each one of these, I think it was like, two pieces were eight hours and one piece was nine hours so what's that like 25 total hours of printing um so anyways let's give them our first test try all right so we're going to start with like the main part which these still need to be cleaned up but a couple little like chunks on the inside Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> that fits freaking awesome. I'll try and show you up close. There's like no gap between the OEM airbox and mine right along this flange here. Might be a little hard to see, but in the back, Kind of the same, butts right up against it. When you get inside, only the tiniest little gap, well once I take my hand off of it, tiniest, tiniest little gap up in these corners, which, you know, oops, be almost impossible to get rid of. So that's cool, all right. So that's good. Let's try the next two pieces. Oh, you know what I have to do? So I printed it, my model had this flange, but that obviously won't be there when I make this out of a carbon fiber part. And that piece interferes with this ear. It's meant to just go around the whole thing. So real quickly, I have to cut out this little bit of a flange on both of them. All right, so about 30 seconds with the Dremel. You can see I got rid of that little flange that was right in here. Looks good. Now I think I mentioned this in the modeling part of the video. We're gonna be super tight under here, especially when this is all one piece. Um, but I think we'll be okay. Worst case scenario would be make this little flange a little bit thinner uh, or just you know shorter so it can kind of slip in. But the reason we're pushing to get so tight in here is so the flange can kind of seal this whole back edge right here and then the only gap you have is this little bit right here all right so front half that fits there so this edge right here mates up very good last piece with as little play as i have you know we got our perimeter around this mounting tab really good so I would expect the same from this one. And 
We do tiny, tiny bit of play, which is good. That mates up. That mates up. So let's see. All right. Let me get some clamps to kind of hold this stuff. I could just snap the J clips back in, um, but I think clamps will just be a little bit easier. All right. So you can see tiny, tiny little bit of difference just the way they're kind of being like tweaked right now um, but as far as how much room I have how good this fits you know this gap like I mentioned is real nice and tight so no air will squeeze out of there everything once I kind of hold it everything's obviously just kind of floppy it squeezes in there with a little bit of space I don't know if we can quite see it under here uh, not really, but you can see real good, nice, tight to the OEM airbox. All right, guys, there we go. Uh, that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. To me, this is kind of new, new-ish, you know, because I'm really pushing uh, stuff that I've done before up to this point. Um, if you've been following this, this is a four-part series. This is going to be the end of video two. Video three will be taking these three pieces making them into one piece, smoothing it and molding it. And at the end of that video, we'll have a mold ready to make a part. Video four again will be finally making the carbon fiber airbox lid. So if you like this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. As always, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.